uh, our world building session for our Iron Lords of Zakesh campaign, which we're going to be starting here shortly. Uh, in the previous installment, we talked about um, the world of the campaign and kind of did a little bit of world building together, utilizing ideas that Tila had about her character and where her characters come from, and then ideas that I had about the overall campaign. Um, and now we're going to talk more about the overall, like the campaign in general, the story of it, the feel of it. Um, and then uh, also talk more about Tila's character, uh, Teak of Tien, <laughs> who is an Aladrin monk. Yes. So, um, so yeah, if you haven't seen the first uh, episode, there's a link down in the description where you can go watch that. You'll definitely want to check it out before watching this one, but we're going to go ahead and just jump right into it. So what we're going to start out with here is actually uh, Tila rolling up her character. Um, because I feel like once we have uh, Teak rolled up and we have her background and all of her mechanical abilities. And all of her stuff. All of her my stuff. My favorite part. Yeah, all of her <laughs> uh, get to go shopping. All of that kind of stuff. That'll give us a little bit more direction as to where we want to go with the campaign and specifically how we want to start it. Mm -hmm. Because that's really what we're going to be deciding here is like how we want this campaign to start out. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So, so is it like how I kind of look at us cooperatively world building and doing stuff like this together is we like have started the started down the, the track but we don't know where it goes yet. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so it's like what do we what does my character know about what she's going into mm -hmm. and then just sort of go from there. Exactly, exactly. And that'll give me more to go on as a dungeon master as well. So um, we are gonna kind of skip past a lot of the character creation stuff that is not pertinent but if you're interested in seeing a more in-depth uh, character creation process, you can either check out my playlist Hero Workshop, or Tila and I did a video, a party of two video, where we both rolled up characters together. So both of those links will be down in the description. So, uh, but yeah, we're gonna go ahead and get that started. While Tila's rolling up Teak, um, getting her all squared away, uh, I'm gonna be coming up with kind of some uh, non-player character ideas, maybe some magical items. Um, just kind of brainstorming on my own over here, um, and I'm going to use note cards to do that. So I've got my roll tables here for NPC stuff. I've got a list of possible NPCs. I've got the Dungeon Master's Guide as well. So I'm just going to kind of come up with some cool characters you can maybe throw in the campaign while she's doing that. What's your, what's your total? So, order? my total here is 13, 15, 11, 9, 11, 11. So, three 11s. Yeah. Um, but I got some pluses already, so I can boost some of those up, which is nice. Yeah. Um, so, let's see. I need to have high dex and high wisdom. Yeah. So, I... Um, you know, I think I'm actually going to put the 13 into my deck, so I'm going to have a 15 deck. Yeah. Um, I'm going to go ahead and put the 15 in Wisdom, because I don't have anything else helping me out with that. Yeah, that's perfect. From the 11s here, I want her to be fairly smart, so I'm going to go ahead and put one of the 11s in Intelligence. Which will give you a 12 total. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, the other... Oh, man. I, I'm not sure if I want her to be hardy or uh, charismatic. Oh, yeah. Well, I know one of the 11s, uh, last two 11s, is going to go into strength. Okay. So now I have a 9 left and an 11 left to go to either constitution or charisma. Well, thinking about the character, mm -hmm. the idea that she was kind of in a self-imposed exile of sorts, has been right. isolated. It would make sense that maybe her charisma is not It's probably highest. pretty low, yeah. Um, so, uh, yeah, a, so I'm going to go ahead and put the nine into charisma. And from a, from a um, mechanical standpoint, we are going to be looking at making regular constitution checks. It's true. Um, with, the, with the magical miasma. Mm -hmm. And though a nine constitution would make it interesting, <laughs> it would also, yeah. uh, you know, be... Possibly little... make it a very short campaign. <laughs> it would be a bit of a handicap, <laughs> yeah. So. All right. So what we are looking at here going down is we have a 11 in strength, mm -hmm. a 15 in dexterity... That's a plus two, right? Yeah. Okay. 
Um, Constitution, we have an 11. Intelligence, a 12. Wisdom, a 15. And Charisma, a 9. And at level 4, when you're able to beef some stats up, mm -hmm. you can drop one point in each of Dex and Wisdom and bump them both up to plus yeah, 3s. That'll be wonderful. So that'll be kind of nice. And with, uh, with a monk, if you don't know your... You don't wear armor, but your AC, you get to add your Wisdom and, and your, your Dexterity. Dex. Yeah. So having the... Uh, being able to add four to my <laughs> to my AC without being able to yeah. wear armor is nice. That's gonna be nice <laughs> for sure. All right, so those are her stats, and she's gonna go ahead and continue and uh, create her character. Ah, uh, yes. So I am proficient in archaeologist tools mm -hmm. because of my gracious GM. <laughs> exactly. So that will be um, well. It'll probably be. Uh, dexterity check plus your proficiency bonus since you have proficiency with the archaeologist tools yeah. to excavate, excavate any sort things. of yeah. So I've been debating about my background a little bit, whether I want to do acolyte or hermit, mm. because she has been a hermit for a century and a half at this point, but she kind of grew up as a like an acolyte or I'm like gonna, a, a I'm gonna throw another wrench sage? in the works. Sage. Oh I just turned to that page. <laughs> I was like, oh wait, sage. <clears throat> sage could work too. Because if you if you know your history and you're interested in relics and things like that, that yeah. to me could really either be scholar or sage. It's true. But hermit also works, so you're gonna it have does. to make some decisions. Yeah. Here. And you could also pull a me and kind of pick one as your main and then pull some right. pieces from the other ones. Yeah. So I'm actually I am gonna take a moment and read through them a little bit and decide what I want to do. Good call. All right, so you've made your decision. I have. I, after reading through them, decided that what fits the best for Teak is the hermit background. And a couple things really caught my eye for it that I think will be interesting to kind of help us form where she fits in the world even a little bit better than we already have. Right. Um... So it works because she lived in seclusion um, for 150 years, like we just talked about. And um, th right off the bat, <laughs> there's at the end of this sentence, it's, you found quiet solitude and perhaps some of the answers you were looking for. Oh. And I think that in her isolation and part of her time up there was in complete isolation, just doing meditation exercises for maybe even years at a time completely by herself mm -hmm. um she probably was able to have a lot of um moments of enlightenment and have some inner discovery and some discovery about the world around her too yeah absolutely um which brings me to the other reason why i was really drawn to it um the hermit has a feature called discovery and it's supposed to talk between you and your GM. <laughs> um, so it's uh, the quiet seclusion your extended hermitage gave you uh, gave you access to a unique and powerful discovery. The exact nature of this revelation depends on the nature of your seclusion. It may have been a great truth. Um, hmm. It could be a vision of a sight no one has ever seen, um, may have uncovered a fact that has long been forgotten or unearthed some relic of the past that could rewrite history. Um, or you might find information that could be damaging to the people who or co-signed you to exile and hence the reason you return to society. So what I'm wondering is, so she's been in seclusion maybe she's part way through this kind of completely isolated meditation vision quest um a decade of silence or something like that and she has a vision of what's going on back home yeah. and <laughs> um maybe something with some some kind of weird imagery that <laughs> yeah, I'm thinking, you or I can kind of come up with. Yeah, I'm thinking like Luke Skywalker and Dagobah yeah. like seeing, you know, a possible outcome, mm -hmm. you know, and so you're you're in this seclusion, you know, you're 
you know, months away from from anybody, mm-hmm. and you're in this seclusion, and you and you have a vision of your homeland, your city, and you just see it. You know, you just see the death and destruction that's happening back home, mm-hmm. and that's so. Instead of hearing about it through a messenger or something, you're you're literally receiving a, a vision right. yeah. about what's happening. So there we have in the the hermit background a clear reason for why she's coming home. Yeah, which is, that's <laughs> exactly what the backgrounds are intended yeah. to do. So that's perfect. Yeah, like so it that. lines up really well. Yeah, I like that um, a lot. And I think the rest of the hermit stuff I'm just going to randomly roll for because cool. it's a lot of really cool stuff that will help me flesh out the character a little bit better. Great. So why don't we go ahead and have you do that and then we'll get back them. All right. Well, I went through and um, rolled and chose some of my traits for my character, and it added some interesting things yeah. <laughs> into the mix here. So um, the first thing that you roll for or choose from with a hermit is the why you were living a life of seclusion. So I went ahead and rolled for it because all of them would have worked just fine. What I came up with was that I was the caretaker of an ancient ruin or relic, and this actually fits in kind of a cool way, so Matt and I will have to figure out exactly what it is. I mean, and honestly, we're probably going to start out with, it's a statue of this. Yeah. Like, statues are always easy to go with, or um, like a precious gem or something like that. I think that maybe she kind of snuck it out of there when she left, because she was like, hmm. This place is going to hell in a handbasket. Yeah. I'm just gonna. This is like something that's really important to my culture. I'm gonna take it with me. That's what I'm thinking too. Yeah. Um. So we'll have to kind of figure out. Yeah. Or how it's we something handle, something handle that, that plays into the the warforge somehow that you didn't want your people to have anymore. Right. Yeah. Is another option. So mm-hmm. we'll. That's something that we'll kind of play with, I think, during the campaign. Yeah. And exactly. Figure out what we want to do with mm-hmm. that. So. Yeah. It might not even be something that comes up for a while. Yeah. So. Yeah. We'll, we'll cross that bridge when we get to it. And it might, it might be something that you or I just have an epiphany one time and realize what it is. So. Exactly, yeah. Um, so the next thing is my personality traits. And um, first time I rolled on this, I rolled that I'd been isolated for so long that I never talk and I prefer to use sign language and grunt. <laughs> and while initially I'm thinking, oh, that's pretty cool, that would be fun to RP what I realized it was it would be fun to RP with a group. Yeah. <laughs> Not for a one-on-one campaign. So I went ahead and, <laughs> rolled and re-rolled that one. And I came up with something that already is, it was going to work really well, that I'm working on a ground, or I'm on a grand philosophical idea, and I love to share it and talk with people about it and speculate with everyone. I like it. So that'll be kind of a, it'll be nice, like, Tavern talk. <laughs> It'll be good uh, RP fallback. Yeah, exactly. Stuff. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, so then for my ideals, I wanted to stick with lawful good. Um, so the ideals they kind of tie in with, or they can tie in with your um, with your alignment. Yeah. And I kind of I really liked both of them, so I went ahead and just wrote both down um, as per my GM. <laughs> And um, what I came up with is that she believes that her gifts are meant to be shared and that she tries to be un- not let emotion interfere with what she needs to get done. Yeah. So um, it will be almost kind of Spock-like, which will be yeah, kind of fun. Yeah, I like it. Um, and then for her bond, I rolled something interesting that should her discovery come to light, it could end the world. And again, this is something that I think we're probably just going to kind of see how it plays out. Yeah. Um, so it could either be her discovery, her epiphany that she had while she was meditating, or it could be this um, this artifact that she has. Yeah. So, well, that'll be fun to kind of... To That's, see what ends yeah, up with that. All of this stuff has given me a lot of Dungeon Master fodder to, to play with. Here, right, so, yeah, to kind yeah. of help guide the campaign exactly. a little bit. Exactly, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, and then the last thing was her flaw, and this one I, I'm a little bit nervous about trying to figure out how it's going to fit, mm-hmm. <laughs> but I think it'll be kind of fun to experiment with RPing it, is that she's secretly bloodthirsty, and she's just trying to hide that and cover yeah. it up, but she secretly has these like dark, bloodthirsty thoughts. Yeah. So I'm thinking she is... Um, 
It reminds me of Tuvok on Star Trek Voyager. Okay, yeah. <laughs> there's a few there's a few episodes where he has some different things going on. Yeah. Um where you find out that he actually has these repressed dark thoughts too. Yeah, I like it. So I think that I have a good idea on how I can work that in there. Absolutely. Um, it's not even something that she would have to act on, but maybe right. like violence is especially upsetting. Yeah. <laughs> because well, she's having to hold back. And you can kind of take that like uh, however you will. Like you know, it might be that she has outbursts of anger, or right. you know, she went into seclusion because she sensed that she was capable of doing great harm mm-hmm. to others and didn't want to yeah. do that or, you know, something like that would yeah. be cool, so. Yeah, you know, she, she did her anger management and she just want to stick with her, she wants to <laughs> stick with her steps. She just don't want to be around drama ramas anymore. <laughs> so. <laughs> Perfect. So that's your background stuff. Now I think we just have to do equipment and mm-hmm. then we'll kind of give an overview of the character and, and where we see her going, yeah. so, yeah. <laughs> All right, so Tila has bought equipment for Teak, and now we're gonna roll for her trinket, and we both decided that this might help us figure out what exactly she was guarding. So hopefully it's not a bag of teeth or something. Yeah. <laughs> Griffin grease. <laughs> Griffin grease. So I got, oh, I rolled with the wrong thing. You rolled two percentiles. So just cut before the... <laughs> you need one of those percentiles, babe. Okay. And then you're right there. So 37, 37 is a small, weightless stone block. That's cool. <laughs> is that going to work? Yeah. Oh, wonderful. I can work with that. Great. All right, so Teak is all rolled up and ready to go. I think Tila's going to just briefly uh, talk about the character, and then we're going to segue into talking about the campaign as a whole and also how we want to kind of start it out so uh go ahead and tell us just a little bit about teak yeah um so teak in appearance when you would first walk walk up to her um she has just like really plain dark clothes on they look like they're almost kind of like an oiled cotton they're not tight but they're close fitting on her really slender frame she's a little bit short for and elf um, Mm -hmm. she's on the shorter side very petite but still like slender yeah um if you didn't have anything to compare her to she would look like a tall person but just shrunken down yeah um very pale kind of translucent skin almost like a pearl maybe um with these kind of like soft v's tattooed on her coming down from her cheekbones and back up um in like kind of a pale almost glowing blue and they you don't really notice how much they glow though in comparison to her eyes are like two huge glowing embers uh or embers emeralds <laughs> <laughs> um these like glowing emeralds in her eyes and they still um she's kind of startling looking of course um as you can imagine but if you really look at her eyes there is like a softness and a wisdom but also like a kind of a curiosity. Um, so she has a, a pleasant countenance. Um, attached to her her uh, like tunic, I guess it would be, is also a, a hood that's pretty close fitting. So you you can't really, you can see a little bit of an outline of her ears through the, the hood is stretched pretty tight across her head. Um, and she just has a a small pack you see she has a hammer strapped to the back of it um with a really big chunky bedroll um it looks like she has she's prepared to hunker down in a snowy mountainside if she has to mm-hmm. um but yeah she just has a she carries herself really gracefully and is um always like looking in every direction there's sort of this like wild curiosity about her yeah awesome well, I cannot wait to meet her and interact with her, so I'm pretty excited. So <clears throat> we had talked briefly about where we wanted this campaign to go and, and kind of the the tone of it. Right. Um, which was one of kind of exploration, discovery, and reclamation. You're mm-hmm. trying to preserve your culture. And mm-hmm. we talked about that kind of briefly in the first part. But you had also uh, mentioned to me after... 
uh, listening to the definitive RPG podcast, Roll Up and Die, <laughs> which you can listen to right now at BeABetterGameMaster.com. But you had mentioned... Or find it on iTunes. Or find us on iTunes <laughs> or uh, Podomatic or any, any other uh, pod service you can think of. But you had mentioned that the idea of omens and prophecies and visions mm-hmm. appeal to you, and we had briefly talked about you receiving these visions while you're doing right. meditation. So... What are you thinking about that? Well, how do you want that to factor into this campaign? Because I, I want to take some notes here right. and put some stuff that you're wanting to explore into the yeah. campaign. Well, one of the things that I um, that I like, especially with play on one-on-one campaigns, is you get to experience your character experiences a lot more diversity in the types of things they're doing, roles that you make mm-hmm. than you sometimes do with your when you're playing with a group, um, and so you have an opportunity to kind of form how you level your character up based on what they've been doing and what they're good at. So that's an option that you can do. So I decided that I really wanted to pay attention to the specific experiences that Teak is going to have as she goes through this journey. And um, the interesting thing is that going from level 2 to level 3 as a monk, when you get to level 3, you get to choose your monastic tradition. Yeah. And the one that really appeals to me, and especially since we have kind of this elemental theme going on yes. with uh, the races that um, populate this island that we're going to be on, mm-hmm. um, is the... What's it called? Is it Kesh? No, no, no. Oh, the, the Way of the, the Four Elements. Way, oh, the Way of the Four Elements. Yeah. <laughs> so the one that appealed to me the most was the Way of the Four Elements. Um because it kind of reminds me of Avatar and yeah. Korra and Absolutely. all of those. Yeah. Um, and plus it's kind of fun in a one-on-one campaign to be super over-the-top flashy. Yeah. Because you don't have to worry about like balancing and like making sure that everyone at the table gets to shine because you're the only person. Yeah, so you can just do the entire time. Yeah. crazy stuff left and right exactly. and not worry about it. Exactly. So I'm thinking I want to head that direction with her. Okay, yeah. So I'm wondering if um, this is just an idea I had, and you're going to do whatever you want with it. Yeah. Um, But if maybe her vision or something that happens in the first couple campaigns as between levels two and three, Mm -hmm. um, as she's getting some of that practical practice of her, um, her philosophy and way of life. Yeah instead of just knowing the theoretical part of it, mm-hmm. if some things maybe happen that direct her towards one of her monastic traditions. Okay. And just know that I really want to take the elemental. <laughs> <laughs> no, I think, I think the elemental thing is definitely something that I'm going to just take and run with because yeah. it has, it's a just very nice framework that I can right. put a lot of stuff on. Um, it's great for designing dungeons, right. for puzzles, yeah. encounters. Well, it's just rife with color for it your is. It is. world building. It gives me so much <laughs> to work with. So, um, yeah, what I'm thinking is, so kind of going a little Zelda-y with it mm. and making it so that you, you're kind of these relics that you're looking for are going to be tied to the elements. Okay. So maybe, you know, you're looking for, like the, um, the Princess of the Apocalypse adventure module just came out and there are, there's a one weapon for each element right. in there and they're each like, they're like legendary. Mm-hmm. So I'm not thinking like weapons necessarily, but like magical items right. that are tied to an element. Yeah. Um, and having you come across those throughout the campaign mm-hmm. and having it be a big deal when you find one. Right, Like, yeah. I'm thinking, like, maybe every couple sessions you find one, yeah. if that, you know? Right. And maybe you are driven by visions. Mm-hmm. So you, you're in a ladrin, you're an elf, so you meditate. You don't sleep, you right. meditate. So I'm thinking, as a DM, that's going to give me a lot of, like, power to say, like, okay, while you're meditating, this is what you see. Mm-hmm. And, like... Maybe not every night you get a vision, but every once in a while you, 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 you know, do the little meditating thing, yeah. you go in your lotus pose, you sit there, and you get a vision. Yeah. No, that sounds perfect. So, and I like the idea, too, of, I mean, you were saying, like, aside from a couple campaigns a while ago, you've never done, like, high epic fantasy. Right, yeah. And it's always been more small-scale yeah, type things. Which is is something that, like, I 
just kind of veer towards is right, like the yeah. small stuff. Mm-hmm. But I like the idea of the one on one campaign being like epic. Right. Like like just really high fantasy. Yeah. Because I like we both have mentioned, it's a good opportunity to just go crazy. Just go balls out. And do um just do the craziest thing that you can think of yeah. because it's just the two people. It's a little easier to coordinate all of the crazy. Yeah. But just, I see a lot of potential there where, not necessarily that, like, you're the chosen one or anything right, like that, but, right, like, right, right. we have this whole idea of, like, um, all of this has happened before and will happen mm-hmm. again. We've got the elements. We have your visions. All of that can kind of be, like, there's something else at work here. Right. There is not necessarily, like, a, a deity, mm-hmm. but the energies of the world are going to be working through teak of tea and i think right i think yeah so like i'm gonna strive in this campaign to make teak feel like i'm the one that's got to do this there's nobody mm-hmm. else that can do what i'm doing right now like yeah. this is my purpose mm-hmm. and i and i don't want to just tell you that right i want you to feel yeah that yeah so i want your character to feel important mm-hmm. and i want that that feeling of epic fantasy right to kind of be throughout the campaign so i'm thinking like Lots of dungeons, lots of, like, mm-hmm. epic action set pieces, like, yeah. you know, just big battles and, mm-hmm. and big kind of um, elaborate sort of, like, Pirates of the Caribbean style right. action set pieces. Oh, yeah. You know, like, awesome. you're fighting some guy while a wheel, on a wheel that's rolling, you know, <laughs> yeah. things like that. Yeah. Giving you lots of opportunity to do cool martial arts stuff. Mm-hmm. So that's kind of what I'm going to come to the campaign. <laughs> you're liking that. <laughs> that's what I'm going to kind of come to the campaign for. And, I'm, and uh, I just want the overall feel to be, like... Um, like just exciting uh, like I was saying uh, exploration discovery and reclamation yeah so that's kind of what the, the three things that I'm going to be going for here awesome so cool yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and lots of uh, and as I, I like colorful NPCs mm-hmm. and it's really important with a one on one campaign to f- like fill your setting with lots of fun NPCs because there's no one else for you to talk to right yeah. so um, even potentially people that are going to be with you for right, a while yeah. you know and both one-on-one campaigns that Matt and I are currently doing, um, I have ended up kind of encouraging some NPCs yeah. to maybe kind of form a party with me. Exactly. Um, yeah. So I I try to get to know what the NPC's motivation is mm-hmm. and if I can kind of get them to want to fight with me for exactly. something. Exactly, yeah. So, and there's like a... <laughs> Here's a little quick tip for a player doing on one a one on one. Like, don't be afraid to kind of drop hints when you're talking to an NPC. Drop hints to your GM that hey, I might kind of like this person as a party member. Yeah, and or mind like, you, I think that that's probably his intention most of the time, anyways. Yeah, yeah. But like, if there's someone who you feel like your character can have a really cool RP rapport with, mm-hmm. like, go for it and just find some reason for them to stick with you. Exactly, and. I think, you know, if we're going for that epic fantasy kind of feel mm-hmm. and you're you're a person, a hero who is the only person right now capable of doing this, you're bound to attract people who are willing to lay their lives down right. for you. Right. And so obviously that's not gonna come without some work and some effort, but I think yeah. that that's eventually where we're gonna get where you were gonna have like two or three really ro- loyal followers. Right. Um, and just with the races that we have here with the the Goliaths and the bird folk and the dwarves mm-hmm. and the swamp humans and stuff like that, I think yeah. it's going to be really fun for me to, like, like give you one of each. Yeah. Like, have, have you have, yeah, have, yeah. have a complete set, you know? <laughs> right. Of the people of, uh, of Zakesh, so. Right, yeah. That'll um, be really fun. Yeah. And then the other thing I kind of wanted to talk about before we wrap things up, because I think we both have a pretty good idea of what we're going to be shooting for yeah. in this campaign. Yeah. And like I was saying earlier, like you don't want to overdo it. Like I right. don't want to sit here and be like, well, and I think like 15 sessions in, this is going to happen. Right. You know? Well, and the thing too is like the, the cooperative building has to end at a certain point, or mm-hmm. I'm going to know exactly, we're going to end up just setting up a train track for ourselves yeah, to go down. Exactly. So, like, at this point, Matt and I probably won't brainstorm much past this, because no. I know everything that my character would kind of know and expect during her journey back home. Yeah. Because she's having these great visions, mm-hmm. she has this weird cube that she knows is important for some reason. Yeah. So she's no she knows that she's getting into some really big 
earth shattering stuff anyways yeah so really we're not spoiling anything going into it yeah well um, and you've given i just have me... a really firm knowledge of exactly what what i'm going into exactly, yeah. versus um doing the kind of like you do with a group most of the time is rping on the fly like you know what you're doing yeah. you know the area yeah exactly so like because instead of being like do I know about Goliaths and like what their deal is? Yeah. Like that won't make me roll for that because yeah, yeah my character's from here. You're she from knows here. You're exactly. Know. Exactly. So yeah. <laughs> well, and and you've given me enough ammo mm -hmm. for my for for my prep. Right. And you've also told me kind of things that you're looking for in the campaign, so I right. know where to go. So at this point, it's like I'm going to take all that stuff. And I'm gonna go close the door, and I'm gonna figure yeah. out what the campaign is gonna be, and I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna plan out the first couple sessions. Right. So, but so the other thing I was gonna ask you too was, um, like first session, mm -hmm. um, which is probably gonna be titled Homecoming. Mm -hmm. Is 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 I mean we're just gonna jump right into it with you getting home and and finding yeah finding it. But my question for you is, um, is there anything? specifically that you haven't experienced in a tabletop RPG, whether it be a specific monster or... Oh, I mean, there's loads. I mean, is there anything... But is... I mean, is there anything that you, like, go, oh, I've always wanted to, like... Owlbear. Owlbear? Okay. <laughs> I've never encountered an owlbear before. That's the correct answer was um, owlbear. That's what I was looking for. <laughs> Siri? Owlbear? Stupid. That was weird. <laughs> um, no, I know you love owl bears. No. I think that they're adorable. So you want to kill one? <laughs> <No>. <laughs> if I have to, I will. But yeah. uh, no, I just I've never encountered an owl bear. Right. Even just an owl bear walking down the street, I would get a chuckle out of that. So <laughs> you want to go super avatar with this campaign? You want to you want to <laughs> bend all the elements? That. You want to encounter an owl? I didn't even think about that. No, that's totally cool. But, uh, so, Albert, any any <laughs> anything else that you can like D and D classic tropes that you want to run into or deal with or contend with? I'm not sure. Or classic stuff that you always love that you want to deal with: kobolds, um, goblins, orcs. Oh, I'm not sure. You're not sure. Well, I'm can, always, I'm delighted with with everything. Well, I'm gonna take. I'm definitely gonna use Owlbear at some. Yeah, point. Yeah, use Owlbear. I'll think about other things. Okay. Um. I okay. SK. <laughs> SK has some ideas. <laughs> I'd like, to, like I'd like you to pet the cat more. One on one, I want to play. <laughs> um. Yeah, I can't think of anything. Okay. Well, I can take Owlbear and run with it. Awesome. I'm excited about it. <laughs> cool. All right. Well, I think we have um, a really good campaign brewing here. I think yeah. it's going to be a lot of fun to play and mm -hmm. run and watch. And um, I hope that people have already kind of gotten a feel for how you go about doing a one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I think that the takeaway is that it's very similar to running a normal game, except that there is an opportunity to be seized upon, and that is a lot of collaboration with your player, and yeah. making sure that you're both kind of like, oh, I've always wanted to do this, or I want it to feel like this, and coming together and really shaping the campaign around mm -hmm. that, so. But I'm really looking forward to running it. I'm really looking forward to playing it. Um, and I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna kind of record one session at a time and release them in 30 minute segments. I'm gonna edit them all together so they're easy to watch. Um, and I think it'll be a really, like, you know, the Provokers games are like four hours a piece. These are going to be a little bit more digestible, I think. You know, releasing one a week that's a half hour or something like that. So I yeah. think that'll be good. Yeah. All right. Anyway, guys, um, that's going to be it from us. Take care and happy gaming all. SK's here. <laughs> SK's like, ah, I have to get in before they're done. <laughs> this is my moment. Mr. DeMille, I'm ready for my close-up. my 15 minutes. <laughs>